Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we'll be taking a look at creating this shimmering particle ocean scene. So there are some pretty interesting techniques involved in creating this look, and I think you'll find them useful. So let's make a start on building it. So let's begin by checking on our project setup. I'm going for 1920 1080, 24 frames a second, and the initial duration I'm choosing is 60 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and import a background asset, assets folder, background import. Now this is a quite a wide image, so I'm just going to do some scaling on it. So properties, and let's have an X scale of 150 and a Y scale of 200. And I'm also going to position it on Z at negative 1500. And I'm going to turn this group to 3D because that's going to be important later on. And I'm just going to turn off its lighting. And then I'm going to make a new group above this and I'm going to make this 2D. And what I want to do here is I want to darken off the lower half of this image. So I'm going to come over to the library generators. I'll look for gradient, bring this into this 2D group here. Come over to the inspector, open up the gradient. Let's make this color here black and this one. Let's make it white. And then let's set the blend mode of this layer to multiply. And you can see what that does is it it kind of darkens down the, the lower half. It's doing too much, so let's just reduce the opacity down to 50%. Now let's actually make our particle system. So this is one of those projects where we're actually using a particle system to drive a replicator, and this is a kind of really interesting technique. So first of all, we need to make a new group, so objects new group, and Let's just turn this to 2D for the time being. Let's come over to the library. Let's scroll down to content. And in this search bar, let's type the word dust. And what we want is dust 06. So let's bring that into our 2D group there. I'm going to set the scale of this dust to 10%. And then I'm going to come over to filters and color and levels. And really what I want to do here is just to make it really nice and bright. So I'm going to grab this white control and drag it down to probably somewhere around there. Then what I can do is I can take this dust and I can make an emitter out of it. So object make particles. So let's just move down the timeline a bit. And because we're making an ocean, I'm going to change the shape to wave. So let's just set up the start and end points for the X. I want negative 960 for the start point and positive 960 for the end point. I'm going to increase the amplitude, in other words, the wave height to 100. The frequency I want to set to 1.5. And we'll be playing with the phase a little bit later on, but let's first of all, just come down and set up the other things. So let's turn on 3D. I want an emission latitude of 60 degrees, an emission longitude of 270, and an emission range of zero. And what this will do is it'll make the particles not fly exactly upwards because I've chosen a latitude of 60. They're slightly sort of drifting off to the side like that. So then let's come to the birth rate. I'm going to have to crank this up to 600 because we need a lot of particles. I'm going to set the initial number to 100. The life I'm going to set to 2 with a life randomness of 2. The speed I'm going to set to 20 and a speed randomness of 40. And the speed randomness is going to allow those particles to sort of drift off upwards like that. Then let's scroll down. Let's uh, turn on additive blend while we're here. Let's come into the gradient here. I want to set in a couple of opacity tabs here. So one here and one here. Drag this one to the end. I'm going to select this one and set its location to something like four. And I'm going to click on the first one and set that opacity down to zero. Click on the last one and set that opacity down to zero as well. So they'll sort of very quickly fade in and they'll gradually fade out over life. 
Let's also just play with the scale. I'm going to go with a scale of 90 and a scale randomness of 50. I think that's looking quite nice as a starting point. So then, as I mentioned, we're going to come back and play with the phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a rate behavior to the phase. So right click, add parameter behavior and rate. And I'm going to set the rate to 65. And what that's doing, you can see, is now it's cycling that wave. The other thing we're going to do with this emitter is we're going to add a scale over life. So behaviors, particles, scale over life. Scale at birth is going to be 100% and scale at death is going to be 15. So obviously that kind of just makes them smaller as they rise up. And that's going to give that nice sort of spray effect, I think. So then what I can do is I can make a clone of this emitter in order that we can then use it to drive a replicator. So right click, make clone layer and let's turn off the original and let's select the clone and come down to replicate. So for the shape, I want line and I also want to turn on 3D and let's open up the start and end points. So I'm going to reset the start X to zero. For my start Z, I'm going to select 1500. And my end X point is going to be 720. And my end Z point is going to be negative 1500. And I also want 10 points. And I want to turn on shuffle order. Not seeing the result of that just yet, but that's because there's one other thing we need to do here. And that's to come down to the source frame offset. And what we're going to do is we're going to set that value here to five. So that's going to offset each instance of the, the particle source by five frames. And you can immediately see how that's kind of broken up that symmetry. And we've got this really nice sort of splashing wave look. So as you will no doubt find at this point, it all starts to get very, very sticky. And uh, you're going to have to bear with me uh, I'm not going to actually be able to show you any of this on the run. I'm just going to kind of click through so you can kind of more or less see how it's all looking. The other thing I want to do is I want to select this replicator and come over and set its blend mode to add. We're not really kind of seeing this at its best yet. So what I'm actually going to do is, first of all, turn this group to 3D and I'm going to add a camera. And let's just set this up. So I want... 20 for the Y position. Let's open up the rotation and I want negative three for the X rotation. And for the Y rotation, I'm going to add parameter behavior ramp and I'm going to have a start value of 10 and an end value of negative 10. Now we set up our original composition to be 60 seconds long. And what I'm now going to do is just kind of reduce it down to 30 seconds. Let's come over to our project setup again and set the duration to 30. Then I'm going to come to the last frame of the project. So that's now at 29.23. And I'm going to select the ramp behavior and hit O on the keyboard. So that ramp is taking place only over those 30 seconds, not the full 60. And the reason we did 60 seconds is because we were offsetting the replicator start. And if we didn't have more than enough to play with, we would start to see the replicator instances uh, dropping off at the end. And that's why we initially we started with 60 seconds and now we've, we're coming down to 30 seconds. So I hope that explains itself. I'm just going to turn off those 3D overlays. I don't like to see that grid. So we've got this kind of very uniform swell going left to right, but I also want to break up the tops of the waves so they kind of rise and fall down this sort of z-axis as well. And we can do that by coming back to the replicator and applying a sequence replicator to it. So behaviors, replicator, and sequence replicator. So the parameter that we're going to influence is add position, and we'll be targeting the y, so I'm going to have a value of 25 pixels for that. The sequencing wants to be through, and I want a spread of five. 
And you're not going to be able to see this, I'm afraid. I don't know how, to, how I could actually visualise it for you. Let's just turn it on and off and see if you can see. Yes, yeah, so hopefully you can see that the tops of those waves are kind of now being broken up in a kind of wave pattern of their own. And that's why we had shuffle order on for the replicator, because it's making those ridges less sequential. And I think we're looking pretty good already. And what we next want to do is add some lights. So let's first of all add a light. So first of all, I'm going to set up the color of this light. Let's open this up. I'm going to have 0.57 for the red and 0.84 for the green and 0.66 for the blue. I'm going to set the intensity to 500% and the fall off to 5%. And then I want to move it on Z to 2000 pixels. So you see it's just softly illuminating the foreground. Then I'm going to add a, another light, and this is going to be lighting up the background with a different colour. So for this colour, let's have zero for the red. For the green, let's have 0.73, and for the blue, 0.85. And let's set its intensity to 200%, and then let's move it to 100 pixels on Y, and 200 pixels on Z. And you can see it's sitting there in the background, illuminating those distant particles. So I'm not entirely happy with the intensity of that backlight, so I think I'm going to crank it up to 300% instead. I think that's just a little bit better. So at this point, we've done pretty much as much as we can do. The only thing I want to do is I want to adjust this gradient here. I think we can just darken down the lower half of the frame a little bit more. So let's set that opacity to 75%. And I think that's better. So we've got this more dramatic kind of darkness underneath the, the waves, as it were. So the final step is to do a bit of kind of processing on this whole scene. But given how heavy it is, we really just want to be able to have rendered it and then just work, work on the details of the look separately. Let's actually do that. Let's just come over to Export Movie, uh, make sure to choose something like ProRes HQ and render out the entire project. Click Next. Make sure you know where you've saved it to. So to import our render as a new project, we can come to Import. I'm going to navigate to my Renders folder and bring in the render we just made import it. And what that does is it sets the frame size and the duration to be exactly what we need it to be without any extra setup. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of color correction. So color levels. And let's just let's just play as, as we look at this. I think I want to darken it down a bit. So that sky is probably all the way down there somewhere. Maybe just slight increase in the brightness like that of the whites. So something like that. So then I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it. So right click duplicate. So I'm just going to pause while I work on this. So what I'm going to do here is actually let's turn off the, the background layer while we work on this. What I want to do is I want to isolate just the bright bits because we want to add some nice glow to this. So what we're going to do is filters and color and channel mixer. And we're going to come down to the alpha section here and set each of these values to one and set the alpha alpha to zero. And now you can see we've just got those, those bright uh, particles selected. And what we can do is then blur them and then combine them back over the top of the original. So let's do that. So let's come to filters and blur and Gaussian blur. Let's set a blur value of say 32 and then let's right click on the blur and duplicate. Let's set this amount to something like 128 and let's set that mix value down to something like 40. Let's duplicate it again. Right click duplicate. Let's set this value to 512. And let me reduce this mix value down again to something like 20. Let's right click and duplicate it one more time. Set that amount to something like 1024. So we've got a really nice spread out version of it. And that probably that mix value is going to work for that as well. So then let's turn off our, turn on our background layer, I should say. 
like so. And if I toggle this on and off, you can see how that glow is working. And what we can then do is come to the blend mode for this and set it to something that's going to really make this pop. We could choose add, but we might be better off with linear dodge. I think probably linear dodge is going to be good. So now we've got this really nice glowing effect that really brings the whole thing to life. We might even decide to come to the levels for this. Let's hide the channel mix and controls. They're getting a little bit confusing. And we can just play with these levels till we get even more of a glow, depending on how much we want. And it might be a good idea just to add some grain to everything because we've got this major glow action happening. So with the group selected, I'm going to come to filters and stylize and add noise. I'm going to switch to film grain, I think. And just reduce that amount down to something like 5% or so. And that should take care of, of, of the banding. So there you go. That's our effect complete. It's quite a nice effect, I think. But as you saw, it was relatively easy to do. So that technique of combining a particle emitter with a replicator can produce some really interesting results, I think. Anyway, thanks very much indeed for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you again on the next one.